Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Shadow of a Doubt, starring Anne Blythe and Ray Milland. Now to introduce tonight's program, here is our director, Fletcher Markle. Tonight, we introduce to you rather nervously a gentleman known as Mr. Charles Oakley. Also as Mr. Charles Spencer and Mr. Charles Otis. But mostly, he's Uncle Charlie. And when he's being Uncle Charlie, the family favorite, this man is probably a lot like someone you may know yourself. Tall, attractive, with a slight blur of gray at the temples, who often wears a curious, preoccupied expression, as if he had an important secret to keep. But we hope you don't know anyone with a secret like the Uncle Charlie in Thornton Wilder and Sally Benson's story, Shadow of a Doubt, because life with anyone like him is quite unpredictable, as you shall hear. <laughs> Spencer. Mr. Spencer. Yes? Oh. Mr. Spencer, I hate to bother you. I knew you was resting, but I thought you'd like to know there was two men here. Two men asking for you. A young man and a kind of a older man. The, the older man was here twice before. They were sorry you wasn't in. I... I said you wasn't. Mrs. Teeler, don't stand there. Don't behave like a landlady. Come in and sit down. Well... And close the door. Forgive me for not getting up. It's good to lie down and rest on a hot day. Did they uh, say they'd be back? They didn't say exactly, but I think they will. Just now when I had to walk down the AMP, I seen them standing there at the corner. <laughs> Maybe I, I should have let them in, only you said not to disturb you and... and... Yes? And I'm sure they'll be back. Mr. Spencer, you do look awful tired to me, and that's a fact. Maybe New Jersey doesn't agree with you. Have you got a headache or something? I think maybe you need a real rest. That's what I think. Maybe I do, Mrs. Tilly. Well, I, I'd better go, and you better lock the door when I'm gone. Those friends of yours told me not to say they called, wanted to surprise you, but I thought you'd like to know somehow. Thank you, Mrs. Tilly. You go ahead with your nap. I'll pull a blind down. You rest now, Mr. Spencer. You rest. No. No! Yes. You're there. Down at the corner. But what do you know? You're bluffing. You don't know anything. You've got nothing on me. I got out the back way. Operator, Western Union, please. What do they know? They're bluffing. And it was very easy getting out the back way. Western Union? Oh, I want to send a telegram to uh, Mrs. Joseph Newton, Santa Rosa, California. That's right. Here's the message. You ready? Homesick for you all. Coming to stay a while. Arriving Wednesday. We'll wire exact time later. Love to everybody and a kiss for little Charlie from her Uncle Charlie. Yes, Alberta, that's the signature. Uncle Charlie. Yeah, that's right. Going to Santa Rosa, California. <laughs> Charlie. Charlotte. Who is it? It's me. Oh, come in, Papa. Well, look at you all stretched out on the bed at five o'clock in the afternoon. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? Oh, I'm perfectly well. I've just been thinking for hours, and I've come to the conclusion that I give up. I simply give up. Hmm. Well, I'll sit down if you don't mind. What are you going to give up? Have you ever stopped to think that a family should be the most wonderful thing in the world and that this family has just gone to pieces? We have? Of course we have. We just sort of go along and nothing happens and we've gotten in a terrible rut. Oh, come now. Things aren't that bad. The bank gave me a raise last January. Money. How can you sit there and talk about money when I'm talking about souls? We eat and sleep and that's about all. We don't even have any real conversations. We just talk. And work. Yes, poor mother, she works like a dog. 
Uh, what uh, were you thinking of doing about it? Oh, nothing, I suppose. I guess we'll just have to wait for a miracle or something. Oh, you two are up here, I'm told. Oh, here she is. In Charlie's room, Emmy. All I'm waiting for is a miracle. Now, Charlie. Well, what's all this about? Oh, what's the matter, Charlie? Joe, what's the matter? Well, it seems Oh, like... it's just that I've become a nagging old maid and... <laughs> oh, Mama, you went downtown in that awful hat you promised me you'd throw away. Mother! Goodness, what on earth does it matter what hat I put on? Yes, Roger, I know. I don't see why you let that child yell at you like that, Mother. If he has something to say, I'm going or downstairs that... in a moment anyway. And I'm going down right now. Hope there'll be some dinner soon. Mama, Mama, I'm going downtown to send a telegram. I want a short walk before dinner anyhow. Why, Charlie, who do you know to send a telegram to? Mama, I know just the person to come and save us. A wonderful person who will come and shake us all up so we'll be good and dignified and intelligent well, again. Charlie, have you gone crazy? What do you mean, save us? All this time, there's been the one real right person to save us. Mama, what's Uncle Charlie's address? Wasn't he living in Philadelphia last we heard? Darling, you're not going to ask Uncle Charlie for money. No, no, that wouldn't help us. I just want him to come. Oh, but think of asking a busy man like that to come all the way out west for nothing. He'd come for me. I'm named after him. I'm going to go right now and, and wire him right away. Well, hello, Charlotte. I just called up your house a little while ago, a telegram for your mother. Oh, did you, Mrs. Seastrom? Uh-huh. Well, here you are. It's from your uncle, the spoiled one. My uncle? My uncle Charlie? Oh, let me look. Yes, youngest ones in the family always get spoiled the most, I guess. That's the way it was with my young brother. Mrs. Seastrom, hmm? do you believe in telepathy? Well, I ought to. It's my business. Oh, no, no, not telegraphy. Mental telepathy, like, well... Suppose you have a thought, and suppose the thought's about someone who's in tune with you, and then over thousands of miles that someone knows what you're thinking and they answer you, and it's all mental. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I send telegrams the normal way. Give my regards to your mother. He heard me. Uncle Charlie heard me. <laughs> Like it here in Santa Rosa, Mr. Otis. Nice little town. I'm sure it is. I got all your bags here ready to unload. I'll help you down, Mr. Otis. Here, let me take your arm. Thank you. That's it. I sure hope you feel better, Mr. Otis. Too bad you had to stay in your room all the way. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Here. Yeah, you've been very kind. Oh, thank you, Mr. Otis. Thank you, sir. Look, down there. I think that's him. Oh, I think it is, too. Yes, I think so. Are you... Are My you... young Charlie. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh, at first I didn't know you. You look so sick standing there. Why, you aren't sick, are you? Me sick? Papa, Papa, here he is. Well, I thought so. Why, Uncle Charlie, you aren't sick. That was the funniest thing, the way you were standing there. Come on, let's go. Mother's waiting at home. Well, that's enough talk about my travels. All that's past. Dinner's almost over, and we haven't talked at all about you folks. And say, I've been forgetting something all this time. These parcels on the sideboard here. A few things I brought along with me. Now then, here we are. These are for you, Emmy. One new and one old. Oh, Charles, you didn't have to think of me. Presents are for children, Charles. Of course they are. Here you are, Anne, Roger. Oh, thank you, Uncle Charles. What is it? It's sort of lumpy. Open up and see. And this is yours, Joe. For me, Charles? Oh, Joe, look. Oh, really, Charles, a fur scarf. It's Kalinsky, Mama, four skins. Oh, I wanted one all my life. Oh, and it's exactly right, Mama. It's what you should have. Open the little one, Emmy. Why, look at this. Say, I've never had a wristwatch. Fellows at the bank will think I'm quite a sport. I got a big brown bear. And look what I got. Oh, isn't it wonderful, children? Oh, gee whiz, thanks, thanks. Why, Charles. Charles, the portraits of mother and father in a leather case. Yes, Emmy. 
Charles, did you have these all along? All along. All these years, safe in a deposit box, stored away safe, no matter where I was. Grandpa and Grandma? Yes. Look, everybody. Let me see, Mama. Gee, 1888, it says. That's over 60 years ago. Oh, she was pretty, and he's sweet, isn't he? Everyone was pretty and sweet then, Charlie. The whole world. A wonderful world, not like the world today. It was great to be young then. But we're happy now, Uncle Charlie, now that you're here. Why, look at us. For once, we're all happy at the same time. And now for your little present, Charlie. Oh, I don't want anything. Right now, I have enough. Before you came, I didn't think I had anything, but now... I don't want another thing. I'll go get the coffee. Excuse Charlotte. me. Charlotte! She's crazy. She doesn't mean it, really. If you ask me, I think she's putting on. She's not crazy. Smartest girl in her class at school. Hmm. she like this when she sees it. You folks just sit here and I'll take it to her. Well, tell her the sugar and cream are on the kitchen table, Charles. Charlie? I meant it. Please don't give me anything. Nothing? Why? I can't explain. You came here and Mother's happy and... I'm glad that she named me after you and that she thinks we're both alike. I think we are, too. I know it. It would spoil things if you should give me anything. You're a strange girl, Charlie. Why would it spoil things? Because we're not just an uncle and a niece. There's something else. I know you. I know that you don't tell people a lot of things. I don't either. I have a feeling that inside you somewhere there's something nobody knows. Something nobody knows? Something secret and wonderful and... <laughs> I'll find it out. It's not good to find out too much, Charlie. But we're kind of like twins, don't you see? We have to know. Give me your hand, Charlie. Now, you wear this ring for me. Thank you. But you haven't looked at it. I don't have to look at it. No matter what you gave me, it'd be the same. Yeah, now, let me show it to you. It's a good emerald, a really good one. And good emeralds are the most beautiful things in the world. Why, why, look, Uncle Charlie, you've had something engraved on it. Oh, that's different. I haven't, but I will if you'd like me to. Oh, but you have, Uncle Charlie, you have. It's very faint. It's way down under the stone. T.S. from B.M. Why, they must be somebody's initials. The jeweler cheated me. It doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't. The jeweler cheated me. It's secondhand. The whole world is crooked. The whole rotten world. Give it back to me. But I like it this way. Someone else was probably happy with it. Give it back ring. to me. I'll have that taken off. No, it's perfect the way it is. Now you bring the sugar and cream and I'll carry the tray. Charlie. Come along. <laughs> Coffee? Not yet, thank you, Emmy. What is that tune I'm singing? Anybody know? Sing at the table, you marry a crazy husband. <laughs> Superstitions have been proved 100% wrong. <laughs> well, to finish what I was about to say, Emmy, I've been thinking about transferring some of my money out here from the East. Deposit it in Joe's bank, say, until I see what's what. I suppose you take money to your bank, Joe? <laughs> That's one thing we do, all right, Charles, rake in the dough. Can't promise to give it back, of course. Well, I'll go down tomorrow morning and open an account, 30 or 40,000, just to start things off right. Say, that's a lot of money. Mm. Oh, I can't get that tune out of my head. If somebody will tell me what it is, maybe I'll stop. It's a waltz, dear. Of course it's a waltz, but what waltz? <laughs> you know, it's the funniest thing, but, but sometimes I think of a tune and I can't get it out of my head. And then pretty soon I hear somebody else whistling it or humming it, too. I think tunes jump from head to head. What is it, Uncle Charlie? I don't know. I know what it is. It's right on the tip of my tongue. It's a waltz, and it's Victor Herbert. Victor Herbert wasn't a waltz. He was the composer who composed operettas. It's a Blue Danny waltz. Oh, of course. That's what it is. No. No, it isn't, Uncle Charlie. It's not the Blue Danube. It's the Merry Witch. Oh! Oh, now look what I did. A half a cup of coffee. I'm terribly sorry, Emmy. Hand me another napkin, Ann, will you? Golly. Oh, now it's nothing to make a fuss about. Charles, while we do the dishes, you go in the living room and stretch out on the sofa and read the evening paper. You look tired. Yes, you do that, Charles. I'm going to walk down to the corner and get some tobacco. Come on, Uncle Charlie. Lead a life of luxury. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> know if you'd like another cup of coffee or anything. No. Thank you, Roger. No. 
What's the matter, Uncle Charlie? Something bad in the paper? What? No, 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 no. I was just... Roger, look, did you ever make a house out of a newspaper? You see what I mean? First, you stretch them all out on the floor, see? Yeah. And you fold them, like this, like a tent. Yeah, and then, then you... Look, now you cut out a door, see? See? It's the doorway. Well, now, what are you all up to in here? Why, Roger, that's Papa's paper. Well, it's my fault, Charlie. I, I was showing Roger a game. I never thought about the paper. Well, it's all right. Let's see. Page five, page one, page seven. Here's part two. But where's page three? Three and four, where is it? I never touched it. Uncle Charlie's the only one that touched it. Well, Papa may not notice if we fold it very neatly and very evenly. That's it, Charlie. Nobody will ever miss it. Uncle Charlie. Come in. I've brought your water, Uncle Charlie. You said you liked a pitcher of water and a glass by your bed. Oh, thank you, my dear. You're, you're very thoughtful. Uncle Charlie, I know something. I know a secret that you don't think I know. What secret? Well, remember I said you couldn't hide anything away from me because I'd know? Well, now I know there was something in the evening paper about you. About me? In the evening paper? About you. Please show it to me. I won't tell a soul. How do you know there was something? Well, that's why you played that game with Roger. You didn't want us to know, so you tore the paper. So now that I know, you've got to tell me. Well, I guess you have me, but it wasn't about me. It was about someone I used to know. Oh, is this the page over here on the dresser? It's got a piece torn out of it. Charlie, wait. That's none of your business. Oh, oh Uncle Charlie, you're hurting me. Your hand. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Give me the paper. You hurt my wrist. Charlie, I didn't mean to. I must have grabbed you harder than I thought. I... I was just fooling about it. It was just some gossip, not too pretty, about someone I met up with once. Nothing for you to read. Just forget it. And and don't look at me like that, Charlie. You have eyes like a child. The piece in the paper was nothing, really. Just like a child. Have I? Good night. Good night, young Charlie. Good night, Uncle Charlie. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams, always. <laughs> Breakfast in bed. Such spoiling. Oh, Emmy, you're magnificent. You know, I really can't face the world in the morning. I must have coffee before I can speak. <laughs> what are you all up to this morning? Well, a young man called on us about an hour ago, said his name was Graham, and he wants to interview everybody in the house. Interview everybody? Yeah, that's what he said. He's been sent around the country by a committee on an institute or something, and he's to pick out representative American families and ask them questions. It's kind of a poll. How did he happen to pick this family? Well, he said he looked around and asked around, and he decided we were the ones he wanted. Well, if he's going to ask a lot of questions, he can leave me out of it. Why, you'd have more to tell him than any of us, Charlie. He's going to take our pictures, too. Pictures? Yes. You see, there were really two young men. One takes the pictures. Oh, so there were two of them? No, oh, Mr. Graham was the nicest. He doesn't want us to dress up or anything. He wants us to act just the way we always do. Oh, Emmy, women are fools. They fall for anything. Why do you let two strangers come into your house and turn the place upside down? Why expose your family to a couple of snoopers? I thought you had more sense. Good, Charles. Good morning, Uncle Charlie. My, isn't this grand? Good morning, Charlie. <laughs> well, the way Mr. Graham put it, Charles, it wasn't like snooping at all. It was our duty as citizens. Look here, Emmy, I won't have anything to do with it. I'm just a visitor, and my advice to you is to slam the door in his face. Oh, I couldn't do that. I think it's kind of exciting. And they'd take a photograph of you, and then we could have it. It would be free. No, thank you. I've never been photographed in my life, and I don't want to be. Why, Charles, what makes you talk that way? I had a picture of you. I gave it to Charlie. I tell you, there are none. Oh, I guess you've forgotten all about it. Get it, Charlie. Oh, that. It's over here on my desk. I think you were cute, Uncle Charlie. Let me see it. Here you are. See? Oh. Oh, I don't remember this at all. Well, you were nine, Charles. You had it taken the Christmas you got your bicycle. Uncle Charlie, you were beautiful. Oh, wasn't he, though? I always said Papa should never have bought him that bicycle. Uh -huh. Charlie, he took it right out on the icy road and skidded into a streetcar. We thought he was going to die. I'm glad he didn't. Well, he almost did, let me tell you. He had a fractured skull and he was laid up so long. And when he got well, there was no holding him. 
It was though all that rest was too much for him and he had to get into all sorts of mischief to blow off steam. The whole world is rotten. The whole world's changed. Oh, I can remember that Christmas day when this picture was taken. Mama wanted a picture of you with your curls. Did she? Then that very afternoon you had your accident. And when the picture came a few days later, how Mama cried. She wondered if you'd ever look the same. She wondered if you'd ever be the same. Oh, what's the use of looking backward? What's the use of looking ahead? Today is the thing. That's my philosophy. Today, today, today. Well, Charles, if today is the thing, you better get your clothes on and get down at the bank. Joel will be waiting. He's arranged for you to meet Mr. Green. Mr. Green? He's the president of the bank. And don't be late back. The questionnaire man's coming at 4 o'clock. $30,000, Mr. Oakley? 30? Maybe 40, Mr. Green. Indeed. Well, well. I thought I might settle down here for a while. It's a fine little town. Uh, we think so. Uh, what have you been doing, Mr. Oakley? Well, I suppose you'd call me a promoter. I've done a little bit of everything. You know, it's not hard to make money, Mr. Green. The only trouble I find is that once I make it, I'm not interested in it. Not interested in money? Well, you know as well as I do that there's plenty of money lying around waiting for someone to pick it up. Making money's a boring business. Shall we start with 40000 Yes, well, well, yes, Mr. Oakley, if you'll just fill out this slip. Ah, uh, details. Well, I'm glad to see you're a man that understands details, Mr. Green. They are most important to me, most important. All the little details. Oh, dear. Harry, I wonder if you... Oh, dear, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Oh, we can come back. Uh, come in, Margaret, now that you're here. Come in. I am sorry, dear. Uh, this is Mr. Oakley, ladies. My wife, Mr. Oakley, and Mrs. Potter. Oh, you're Emma Newton's brother. We've heard so much about you. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Green and Miss Potter? Uh, Mrs. Potter. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, there was something about you that <laughs> made me think that... Yes. Uh, what did you want... Margaret. Oh, uh, well, we were going shopping, Laura and I, and I only have five dollars, and I thought... Uh, uh, here you are, my dear. Thank you, Harry. There is something to being a widow, isn't there, Mr. Oakley? One doesn't have to ask a man for money anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Oakley. Mm. I'm so glad we met. Goodbye, Mr. Oakley. Goodbye, Mrs. Green and Miss Potter. Oh, Margaret, isn't he just as charming oh. as Emmy says? Uh, now, Mr. Oakley, where were we? An attractive woman, that Mrs. Potter... Widow, is she? Yes, uh, he was the mm. potter of potter chain stores. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Yes, Mr. Green, as you say, where were we? This is my room here, gentlemen, but my Uncle Charlie's visiting us. And I've given it to him for as long as he stays. Can we have a look, Miss Newton? Mr. Saunders might be interested. Well, if you like. Thank you. Hey, nice room. You mind if I take a picture or two as long as your uncle isn't around? I sure don't want to disturb your uncle after what you said. Well, I suppose so. But I can't imagine anyone being interested in my room. I mean, it isn't really the way I'd like to have it. No, I like it fine. Worth a few shots. We'll stay out here in the hall, Miss Newton. Might as well let him work in peace. Besides, I'd like to talk to you. It's funny your survey happened to our family. Why did you pick us? Oh, we looked around, asked some questions, thought you were about what we wanted. And why not choose your family? You haven't got any skeletons in your closets, <laughs> have you? <laughs> of course we haven't. I wish we did have a few. We're pretty prosaic. You know, your picking us out as an average family gave me kind of a funny feeling. What kind of a funny feeling? Oh, I don't know. I guess I don't like to be an average girl in an average family. Oh, average families are the best. Look at me. I'm from an average family. <laughs> as average as ours? Sure. Besides, I don't think you're average. Oh. Oh, why, Uncle Charlie, you scared me. I got the back stairs in the kitchen, Charlie. I'm all through in here, and I better get one in the hall. Uh, Mr. Saunders has been taking pictures of my room. Well, my sister's just asked me to tell you she was ready for pictures in the kitchen, gentlemen, and I don't like to be photographed. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you for that roll of film. Oh, Uncle Charlie. Give it to me, please. Give it to him, Fred. Too bad. There's a picture of Mrs. Newton and the children on this roll. Thank you. I'm sorry to have troubled you, but that's the way it is. I'm sorry, too. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. We want to help you in an important work, oh, but Oh, I... please. You've been very helpful. And uh, I'd like to ask another favor, if I may. 
Can I borrow you tonight for a walk around the town? I'd like to pick up a little atmosphere, and you know everybody. Why, of course. Anything I can do. Thanks. I'll call around about 6.30. You can show me the best restaurant in town, and we can have dinner. All right. See you then. Come on, Saunders. <laughs> Park, really, but it's better than just an empty town square. It's very pretty. <laughs> I can't get over your breaking your arm when you were ten, and my breaking my arm when I was ten in exactly the same place. Right at the elbow. <laughs> and my wanting to run away from home, and you're wanting to run away from oh, home. Oh, I didn't want to, really. It was just a gesture. I didn't want to either. <laughs> <laughs> want to sit down? Sure. <sighs> this is a peaceful sort of town. Yeah, it seems to be. I I think you have an awfully interesting job, going into people's houses, taking pictures, asking a lot of questions. Why, just like an international spy. Yes. That tune. I know what you are, really. You're a detective. Yes, there's something the matter in your detective. Charlie, listen. I don't want to listen. You're a detective. Why, you're not making a survey at all. You just lied to us. What do you want? What are you doing around here lying to us? You keep away from us. Charlie, come back here. Keep away. Look, Charlie, you've got to listen to me. Just wait until I tell them. Just wait until I tell my mother you lied to her. Charlie, you can't tell her. I'll tell her. You'll see. I'll tell everyone. I'm not afraid. Charlie, I don't want you to be afraid of me. You've got to trust me. Trust you when you've done nothing but lie. When you probably didn't want to take me out at all tonight the way I thought you did. When you probably only took me out to ask a lot of questions. Have I asked you a lot of questions? Have I? All right, I'm a detective. A pretty bad one, I guess. Now, won't you even listen to me? Why should I when you lied to me? I had to. You've just got to believe I had to. When I came here to this town to find a man, I hadn't counted on you. I hadn't counted on your mother or your family. Find a man? What man? There's a man loose in this country. We're after him. We don't know much about him. We don't even know what he looks like. Charlie, this man we want may be your uncle. I don't believe you. Get away from me and leave me alone. We're after one man. Your uncle may be that man. But in the East, there's another man who's being hunted, too. Hunted through Massachusetts and into Maine. He may be the man. My uncle hasn't done anything. Why don't they arrest that man in the East? Why don't you go away and leave us alone? If it weren't for you, you don't think I'd care when or how I caught up with your Uncle Charlie, do you? Because if he's the guy, I am going to catch up with him, Charlie. Remember that. If your Uncle Charlie's the man we want, we'll get him out of town quietly. We won't arrest him here. Arrest him here in town with Mother? I'm trying to tell you we won't. Charlie, you've got to help us. All right. I won't say anything. The parking lot's over this way. Take me home, please. Charlie, he may not be the one. It may be the other guy, the one in the east. Of course. It's probably all a mistake. I hope I'm wrong. I never wanted to be wrong so much in all my life. Well, good night. Oh, this handle. Oh, you have to give it a good yank. Here. Thank you. Oh, something fell. What's this? Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Just yesterday's paper. This car gets to be a regular goat's nest sometimes. Yesterday's paper? May I have it, please? Sure, you're welcome to it. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Charlie. I'll be in touch with you. Yesterday's paper. It was page three. Page three and four. Let me see. Record storms in Midwest. Edward Fairbairn appointed to new post. No, that couldn't be... Where is the Merry Widow murderer? Boston, Massachusetts, February 8th. The whereabouts of the so-called Merry Widow murderer, strong-handed strangler of three wealthy women, is a question baffling detectives today who are conducting a coast-to-coast search for it the killer. It couldn't be Uncle Charlie. 
trailing detectives are after two men, one of whom they are certain is the actual murderer. One was in the East, Jack said, in the East. The fact that all the victims were wealthy widows accounts for his being known to the police as the Merry Widow Murderer. His latest victim was Mrs. Barton Madison, the former musical comedy star known to audiences at the beginning of this century as the beautiful Thelma Shenley. My ring. The ring he gave me. T.S. from B.M. T.S. from B.M. Oh, no. No. Please, no. Our little Charlie, I've missed her all day. Oh, she'll be in the kitchen in a minute. She's getting some things in the kitchen. Well, she slept very late today. She was tired, I guess. She doesn't look quite herself. Here's the sauce, Mama. I nearly forgot about it. Well, here she is. Here's my girl. Well, well, Charlie, at last. Gee, I wonder how many hours you slept oh, today. Sit right down, dear. You won't be able to sleep tonight. Nobody who sleeps oh, all day. Oh, I slept all right. And I kept dreaming perfect nightmares about you, Uncle Charlie. Nightmares about me? About you. You were on a train, and I had a feeling you were running away from something. And when I saw you on the train, I felt terribly happy. Charlie, how could you feel happy about seeing your uncle on a train? Goodness knows, I don't want him on a train. I hope he stays here forever. Well, I, I suppose he'll go sometime. I mean, we all realize he has to go sometime. We have to face facts. Yes. Yes, I like people who face facts. Well, I'm not going to face any such facts as those. Oh. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Charles. I promised Mrs. Green, the president of our club, that you'd talk to the ladies, and she wants to know what you're going to talk about. Well, what am I going to talk about? Lecturers usually give travel or current events, don't they? Oh, not current events. We get current events. Well, what sort of an audience would they be? Oh, women like myself, busy with our homes, most of us. Yes. Women keep busy in towns like this. In the cities, it's different. The cities are full of women. Middle-aged widows, their husbands dead. Husbands who have spent their lives making fortunes, working and working, and then they die and leave their money to their wives, their silly wives. And what do the wives do? These useless women. You see them in the hotels, the best hotels, by the thousands, eating the money, drinking the money, losing the money at bridge, playing all day and all night, just smelling of money. Proud of their jewelry, proud of nothing else. Horrible, faded, fat and greedy women. But they're alive. They're alive. They're human beings. Are they? Are they, Charlie? Are they human or are they fat, wheezing animals? And what happens to animals when they die, when they get too fat and too old? I seem to be making sort of a speech. Well, for heaven's sake, Charles, don't talk about women like that in front of my club. You'll be tarred and feathered. <laughs> and that nice Mrs. Potter is so anxious to have you there, too. She was asking me all about you. The Greens are bringing her here to the little party I'm having after the lecture. Excuse me, please, everybody. I'm not hungry at all. I'm going for a walk instead. Charlie! Where do you suppose she's going? Into town, I guess. Oh, that's nothing to get excited about, Charles. She often goes for walks. Maybe she's got a date with that young man. Well, I'm not hungry either. You all stay here and finish your dinner. I'll catch up with her. Charlie! Charlie, wait! Please go away. What's the matter, Charlie? What's the matter with you? Oh, please, you're hurting my arm again. Look, I've got to talk to you. Come along. Let's go in here, this little bar. Please, my arm. Well, come in here with me. I can't. I've never been in a place like this. Come on in. Why do you make me come in here? It's an awful place. What does it matter where we are? Let's sit over here. Little table in the corner. Hello, Charlie. Hello. Oh, hello, Louise. Uncle Charlie, this is Louise Finch. Hello. Glad to meet you. This is my uncle. I was in Charlie's class in school. Gee, I sure was surprised to see you come in, Charlie. I never thought I'd see you here. I've been here two weeks. I lost my job at Kearns. What do you have, Charlie? Oh, uh, I'll have a chocolate milkshake. We haven't got anything like that. Bring her a ginger ale. I'll have a double brandy. Brandy? We may have some. Never heard of anybody wanting brandy. I'll see. Well, Charlie? Well? You think you know something. That young fella told you something. 
Jack, why should he know anything about you? Now, look, Charlie, something's come between us. I don't want that to happen. We're like twins, you said so yourself. Give me your hand. Don't touch me, Uncle Charlie. What did he tell you? What did that boy tell you? He's got nothing to do with it. I hope he never knows anything about you. Charlie, you're a pretty understanding sort of girl. Now, if you've heard some little things about me, I... Well, I guess you're a woman of the world enough to over overlook them. I guess I've done some pretty foolish things. Made some pretty foolish mistakes. Nothing serious. Just foolish. How could you do things like that? You're my uncle. You're my mother's brother. We thought you were the most wonderful man in the world. Charlie, what do you know? Here's your ring back, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> I'm sorry I was so long. We're awful busy. Oh, whose ring? Ain't it beautiful? Oh, I could just die for a ring like that. Yes, sir, for a ring like that, I'd just about die. I love jewelry, real jewelry. You notice I didn't even have to ask if it was real. You can tell. I can. Bring me another double brandy. Sure. Gee, I'd just die for a ring like that. Someone will. Will what? Die. Someone did. I... Oh. Sit down. Sit down. You think you know something, don't you? Or what do you know? You're just an ordinary little girl living in an ordinary little town. You wake up every morning of your life. You know perfectly well that there's nothing in the world to trouble you. You go through your ordinary little day, and at night you sleep your untroubled, ordinary little sleep, filled with peaceful, stupid dreams. And I brought you nightmares, did I? Charlie, how do you know what the world is like? Do you know the world is a foul sty? Do you know if you ripped the fronts off houses, you'd find swine? The world's a hell. What does it matter what happens in it? Wake up, Charlie. Oh, please. Please. Charlie, you've got to help me. Help you? Yes. There's an end of the running a man can do. You'll never know what it's like to be so tired. I was going to... Well, then I got the idea of coming out here. It's my last chance, Charlie. Give it to me. Graham and the other fellow, they don't know. There's a man in the East. They suspect him, too. And if they get him, why, I... Oh, Charlie, give me this last chance. Take your chance and go. I'll go, Charlie. I'll go. Just give me a few days. Think of your mother. It'll kill your mother. Yes, it would kill my mother. Oh, take your few days and... and then get away from here. <laughs> Church, I see. You're all looking very pleased. How was church, Charlie? Did you count the house? Turn anybody away? No. Seat's enough for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear it. The show's had such a long run, I thought maybe attendance might be falling off. Anything special on the noon broadcasts, Charles? Uh, I haven't been listening, Emmy. Joe has. I've been out on the back porch. Nothing special, but they said they'd caught that fellow. Did Roger go upstairs? The fellow they call the Merry Widow Murderer. Mama, did Roger... What did you say, Papa? They caught that... Strangler fellow. Oh, they did, did they? Where? Up in Maine, Portland, Maine. Didn't catch him exactly. He was running from police at the airport. They were about to nab him when he ran plunk into the propeller of an airplane. Cut him to pieces. They identified him by his clothes. Shirts were all initials C, O, apostrophe H. Pretty fancy having your shirts initialed. It must have been an Irish fellow, C-O apostrophe H. Well, he deserved it. Never cared much for reading about that case. Come help with lunch, Charlie. As for me, I, uh, I think I'll go upstairs and wash up. I'm hungry. Oh, Charlie, uh, that young fellow from the survey was around asking for you. He was? Yep. Said he'd call around again after lunch. Well, I really don't know when I've been so hungry. See you at the lunch table, Charlie. <laughs> I came along while you were out in the front yard, Charlie. It's more private out here. Yes, I know. I came out to wait for you. Papa said you were coming back after lunch. Well, we got a wire from Maine. They called us off the job. I'm just coming up for air. Me too. Now that it's over, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I want to pretend that the whole dreadful thing never happened. 
You won't have to pretend much. Nothing did happen. Oh, look, here are Mother's gloves. She must have dropped them. Oh, Mother and her gloves. She's always losing things. <laughs> What's the matter? I was laughing. It's been so long since I laughed. I like it when you laugh. And I like it when you don't. I guess I like you whatever you do. I guess I like you. I'm glad. I like you, too. Funny how you happen to meet someone and like them and... like them. Isn't it, Charlie? Yes, it is. I'd like us to be friends. I know that we are friends. I'd like to have that to think about. Nothing more? I don't know, Jack. I just don't know yet. All right. But I'd like to come back. Oh, please do. Please come back. Well, what are you two doing standing out here in the middle of the lawn? When I was your age, we sat in the parlor. Hello, Mr. Oakley. I was saying goodbye to Charlie. You all finished here, Mr. Graham? All finished. But I'll be back. You'll be seeing me around. Oh? Uh, not on business, though. Well, I can understand you coming back. Charlie's a fine girl. She's the thing I love most in the world. Really? Yes, I mean it. Well, have a nice trip, Mr. Graham, but don't take any more photographs without permission. Rights of man, you know. Freedom. We'll have a talk about freedom someday, Mr. Oakley. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Graham. Goodbye, Charlie. For now. Goodbye. You'd like to go for a walk, Charlie? When are you leaving, Uncle Charlie? Oh, come now. That other business, it's all over. I'd like to forget it. We're all happy here, and, and I'm going to build a new house for you folks. Give it to you as a present. When are you leaving? But I'm not going, you see. I'm not going. I want to settle down. Live in a place where people know me. Have some money in the bank. Some sort of business. Be part of the family. I see. The most sensible thing for you to do is to be friends with me. I can do a lot for you, Charlie. I can do a lot for all of you. No, not you. We don't want anything from you. Oh, I wish I'd told my mother about you. I wish I had. What could you tell? Who'd believe you? A waltz running through your head? You don't like the initials in a ring and you connect it all up with a newspaper clipping. And now you haven't even got the ring. I don't know what became of it. Why, you have it. I gave it to you in that little bar that night. And I gave it back to you. No. No, you didn't at all. Yes, I did, Charlie. I don't want you here, Uncle Charlie. You and your lies and your fears and, and your evil. I don't want you to touch my mother. So go away. I'm warning you. Go away or I'll kill you myself. You see, that's the way I feel about you. Tony, dear, have you decided what you're going to wear for your uncle's lecture at the club meeting tonight? I'm not going to go, Mama. What's that, dear? Why, <laughs> you're joking. No, I've heard Uncle Charlie's speech. He was rehearsing it on the porch this afternoon, and anyway, somebody has to stay and get things ready for the party. Oh, but we're all getting dressed up, dear, and everything. Your father's going to wear his tuxedo, and I have the new dress Uncle Charlie bought me. I know, but I'd rather stay home and have everything ready for the party when you all get back. Please, Mama, I'd like it better that way. All right, dear. Did you know that Uncle Charlie got some champagne for tonight? Three bottles. Yes, I know. Now, now, Mr. Oakley, I thought champagne was only for battleships. <laughs> Not tonight, Mr. Green. I'd like to propose a toast to... Well, where did young Charlie go? Yeah, she disappeared a moment ago. Well, I guess she's out in the kitchen for a moment, Mrs. Potter. Will you have another sandwich? Oh, thank you, Emmy. No, I have to remember my figure, you know. Well, then, how about you, Mrs. Green? What would you like? Oh, I'll have just one more little one, Emmy. Uh, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I'd, I'd like to propose a toast myself. Uh, to our distinguished visitor, uh, to the man who has made the best speech heard in this town for years. To that very good fellow, Mr. Charles Oakley. <laughs> uh, we don't get many speakers of your caliber, Mr. Oakley. Yes, isn't he just wonderful? Why, thank you, Mrs. Potter. I particularly appreciate that from you. Why, here's Charlie now. Where have you been, for goodness sake, dear? Oh, no, Charlie. Well, I nearly forgot my ring. I took it off in the kitchen while I was fixing things. Oh, yes, Charlie, show everybody your ring. It was a present to young Charlie from her uncle, you see. It's an emerald, a real one. Yes, Uncle Charlie's been keeping it for me. I nearly lost it last week, but I remembered it tonight and went up and got it while you were all at the lecture. 
Isn't it beautiful, everybody? Isn't it beautiful, Uncle Charlie? Yes. Yes, it is. Good emeralds are the most beautiful thing in the world. <clears throat> Charlie, uh, you're uh, just in time for my toast. A farewell toast. I hate to break the news to you like this, but tomorrow I must leave Santa Rosa. Why, Charles? Oh, not forever, Emmy. Well, if that isn't the strangest coincidence. Why, I was planning to go to San Francisco myself tomorrow morning. Well, is anything wrong, Charles? Oh, Emmy, darling, I didn't mean to spoil your fun tonight. But I got a letter today, that's all, and I, well, I have to catch the early morning train. Oh, but I can't bear it if you go, Charles. Oh, Emmy, I'll be back. Well, you see, everybody, we were so close growing up, and then Charles went away, and I got married, and then, well, you know how it is. You sort of forget you're you. You're your husband's wife. Yes, Mama, that's what you are. But you're you, too. We'll be looking for you, Mr. Oakley. We feel you are one of us, uh, don't we, Margaret? Oh, indeed we do. And I want to thank you on behalf of our club members. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Green. You've all been very kind. <laughs> Gentleman in room B? I am. Well, there's a Mrs. Potter in room F in car 142. Want to see you if we pull out, sir. Oh, thanks. And, uh, oh, Porter, there's one more bag of mine. I think it got taken into the next car by mistake. Will you get it, please? Ask around, see who has it. It's a big yellow Gladstone. Yellow? Uh, yes, sir. I'll go back and look. Gee, the train's going to start. I don't want to get carried away. Oh, boy. Maybe it's too late. Maybe I'll have to go along. Oh, there's plenty of time, children. You run along and we'll follow. Race you to the platform, man. Oh, you can run if you want to. I'm a lady, and ladies... Charlie, just a minute. Give me your hand. Please. You know what I think about you. I want you to know that I think you were right to make me leave, Charlie. Best for your mother, best for all of us. You saw what happened to her last night. She's not very strong, you know, and I, I don't think she could stand the shock. I remember once when she was a little girl, she... Oh, the train's moving uh, now. Don't be silly. There's lots of time. <clears throat> Listen, Charlie, I want you to forget all about me. Forget that I ever came to Santa Rosa. Your hands. Please let me get the door open, Uncle Charlie. The train's really moving I now. I know it is, and we'd better get the door open. Let me go, Uncle Charlie. No, no, my dear, no, I won't. I'm going to help you forget me. I've got to do this, Charlie, so long as you know what you do about me. Let me go. Let's get the outside door open, too. Here, uh -huh. this way. Uh -huh. Not yet, Charlie. Let it get a little faster. A little faster. Uh -huh. And there's another train coming along the other track. You can meet it. Charlie, you can meet it. Soon now. No. Soon. Now. Grab him, soldiers. Grab him. Uh -huh. has gained and lost a son, a son that she can be proud of, brave, generous, kindly, with all of the splendid dignity of five... I'm glad you were able to come, Jack, and thanks for standing outside here with me. I, I couldn't bear it inside the church. I couldn't have faced it at all without someone who knew. I did no more. I couldn't tell you. I know. He thought the world was a horrible place. He couldn't have been very happy ever. No. He didn't trust people. He seemed to hate them. He hated the whole world. You know, he said that people like us had no idea what the world was really like. Well, it's not quite as bad as he thought. But it needs a lot of watching. Seems to go crazy every now and then. So like your Uncle Charlie. The memory of our loved ones, the beauty of their souls, the sweetness of their characters, live on with us forever. <laughs> <laughs> 